I'm Ashton Addison from BlockQuest Capital for Investment Pitch Media and the Crypto Coin Show. And today on blockchain interviews with Makoto Takamiya, CEO and co-founder of Soramitsu. Makoto, welcome to the show and thank you for taking the time to come on. Yeah, thanks for having me on. You're very welcome. I'm excited to dive into the Sora ecosystem, Pokeswap, Polkadot, Kusama. Um, I'd love to start our conversation off by just hearing a little bit about your journey um, how you got into you know blockchain, the, the Kusama ecosystem, and to start PokeSwap. Yeah, so I got into crypto back in 2013. So it's been quite a long journey. And like most people, uh, I came in through Bitcoin. And um, from Bitcoin, I got into various altcoins. And uh, starting with uh, actually NXT, which is back in like 2014, if those remember, those of you remember. Um, and then in 2014, I also uh, helped uh, work as a developer on NEM, uh, working on their consensus algorithm. And then um, kind of along this journey, I decided to uh, start a start my own company, uh, Soramitsu, and that was in 2016, so almost six years ago now. And uh, then we've just been doing lots of things in the space. I, I couldn't, couldn't even talk about all of them during the course of the show, I think. Um, so sure. I'll just say that... Uh, my, the things I'm most proud of are work on Hyperledger Iroha, uh, our work with the Central Bank of Cambodia on their CBDC project, and our contributions to the Polkadot and Kusama ecosystems uh, through Sora, Fearless Wallet, Pokeswap. Uh, that's some of the most uh, fun that I've had, actually. Incredible. Yeah. Uh, NXT and NEM, both OG <laughs> projects that I really like. Um, so that's super cool, Makoto. And yeah, with uh, let's dive into you know, the Kusama ecosystem, Polkadot, why you see it um, as the best innovation and why you're working in that ecosystem specifically. And let's just learn about Sora, uh, the network and the ecosystem that has been developed. Yeah, sure. So uh, scalability has always been a hot topic or a big problem in crypto space. and. If you try to extrapolate uh, the users that we have now in crypto to the entire population of the whole world, you, you can just do simple arithmetic to see that a single network is not going to scale. And so uh, the problem really that, from my perspective, that Kusama and Polkadot are trying to solve is really the scalability problem. By building a, a framework that many different networks can come together and they can each kind of specialize in their own little domains and uh, be able to kind of coordinate together and uh, move assets around and maybe even share like some virtual machine space, things like that. Um, so that's, to me, the most compelling vision that exists currently uh, in, in the kind of scalability solution space for crypto. I think it's um, it's a very easy thing to do. Well, easy. <laughs> it's it's the most straightforward way to, uh, to create real scalability that could um, theoretically scale to everyone on Earth. And that's, that's a very important uh, thing to have. Um, and for Sora, we're trying to build a decentralized economic system. So the scalability is really important. Um, now, what does it mean, economic system? So there's lots of cryptocurrencies. There's, of course, you know, Bitcoin. There's kind of utility type currencies like Ethereum. Uh, Sora tries to be a, a decentralized um, a decentralized token that can actually power real economic uses. So productive economic use cases. So the creation of new goods and services. So an economic system is not just a blockchain token and network. Uh, it's also a governance system to actually allocate uh, this to the right people. So you need to allocate the tokens to producers to create new goods and services. And the uh, the macroeconomic theory behind this is uh, the general quantity theory of credit, or also known as the disaggregated quantity theory of credit, um, put forth by Richard Werner. And in his idea, basically, there's uh, three ways you can create money in an economy. Uh, you can create New money for uh, for consumption, consumption of new goods, you know, uh, or, or existing goods. You can create money for asset purchases or speculation, and you can create money for production, which is new goods and services. Mm -hmm. And if you do the first two, you lead to asset price inflation or consumer price inflation. And then only the third option, creating new money for production, actually expands the economic pie, and so it can actually lead to new goods and services. And that's exactly the. The thing that we're trying to do with Sora is actually create a decentralized way to let people all over the world come together, have some democratic oversight, and how to how do you create new tokens? How do you distribute them in an economy? So that's what a de decentralized economic system is. Very cool, Makoto, and thank you for that 
economics background uh, <laughs> <laughs> like lesson there, I think that actually really helps in explaining, you know, a lot of these projects, how do they actually create value in a way that's actually going to create, you know, some kind of gross domestic value and not just creating coins for the sake of it. Um, and especially in the Polkadot and Kusama ecosystem where these parachain lease offering slots, you know, these parachain slots, there's only a limited amount. So you need to have projects that are going to create value uh, in there. Otherwise, it's going to run up, uh, run out of, of spots right away. And I was look following with Soramitsu and saw that you have won one of these slots. Um, maybe you can just talk about where the platform's at right now and in relation to the parachain slots as well. Yeah, so um, so currently we have a network that's been running. It uses uh, Parity Substrate as the blockchain, and it launched in April of 2021, so uh, almost a year ago. And uh, that's a standalone network. We have our own validators. Uh, up to 69 validators can be chosen for some, uh, you know, some epoch to do the validation. Um, and then uh, for our parachain, we're actually setting up a new network. So this is called a little bit uncreatively, it's called the Sora Kusama Parachain Network, um, but it's it's you know no one's going to get confused by the name. It's it's exactly as the name is. It's our uh, Kusama Parachain Network, and the idea is that uh, this network will also be its own independent network. It will have its own governance. Uh, it will be able to evolve over time and try new things. You know, uh, deploy new code and apps uh, independently of the existing network. Um, and then we'll have a bridge uh, between these two substrate-based networks. So you'll be able to move tokens from, uh, well, the, the goal really is to make it, uh, they can move tokens from any substrate chain into our network and be able to do swaps on um, what I think is the most awesome DEX in the ecosystem called PokeSwap. And PokeSwap really is, is trying to be a like the go-to place to trade all these different substrate coins. Mm -hmm. And uh, the pair chain is, you know, invaluable in achieving that goal. We have to have it uh, in order to have the interoperability in the ecosystem in a secure way. And, um, and you know, we're just getting started, but uh, PokeSwap launched last April along with our initial network. And it, um, it, it already has a fairly good TVL given that we don't yet have the, um, the parachain operatable yet. So it's about 30 million uh, TVL, which is it's not bad for a new DEX and a new ecosystem. Uh, and I think it's just going to get better over time. Definitely. Yeah, no, it's very promising for pre-launch right now. And um, it, there definitely needs to be a go-to place for substrate tokens and the Polkadot ecosystem to be able to swap and, and collaborate and, and grow together. So uh, it's looking promising. Um, and when I was looking into PokeSwap, I also saw uh, in the Sora Mitsu ecosystem that there's this uh, stable coin, XST USD. And I know, you know, based on your economics lesson that you gave earlier, I'm, I'm guessing you know a little bit about economics of stable coins as well. And there are a lot of stable coins that have different economic uh, incentives and roles in them. I'm curious about the stable coin in the ecosystem that you're working with and what makes that so special and 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 maybe you can just elaborate on that a little bit to start. Yeah, so XSTUSD is the first uh, Zora synthetic uh, stablecoin. So that's what XST means, like Zora synthetics. And it works kind of like uh, like Luna's uh, XST. So in XST, or sorry, UST, <laughs> in Luna's <laughs> similar name, um, in Luna's uh, UST, uh, you burn, let's say, $10 of Luna tokens and you get $10 of UST. Um, one difference between that and our XST is that uh, in our XST USD is that um, there's no like uh, protocol fee that is put on top. So you do get a better uh, exchange rate because all you're paying is just the liquidity provider fee in the pool. You don't pay this extra like kind of seniorage fee to the network. Mm -hmm. um, but it actually works quite similarly uh, for those who are familiar with uh, Luna. Um, actually, I proposed... <laughs> XST back in 2018, so quite a, a while before their white paper actually came out. Um, but the idea is quite simple. Uh, you uh, you burn, like let's say, one dollar of Zor to get one dollar of XST USD, and to be able to get one dollar of XST USD, you have a primary market maker function that will mint Zor, uh, which is the native token of uh, Sora, 
and uh, and give you the you know your one dollar worth. So it's it's actually built into PokeSwap as a liquidity source, and so uh, users are always guaranteed to get uh, the best rate. and And there's infinite liquidity because it actually can mint new Zor. Um, and uh, so it's it's really quite exciting. We only have XST USD, which is a kind of like a die. It's a die pegged stablecoin. Mm-hmm. Um, but in the future, we want to integrate oracles into the network, and through governance, uh, people will be able to create new stablecoins based on other types of indices. So let's say you know euro or I don't know South African rand, whatever uh, people people want. It's kind of up to the community to um, to have that discussion and to decide. Uh, now, why is this useful, um, and why do we do it this way instead of doing like an over over collateralized um, function like a die? Uh, so with with die, right? If you want to mint some new die, you typically have to put in like a like 130 percent collateral or whatever. It depends on which um, reserve asset you're using, um, but you, you typically have to over collateralize. And in XST, uh, you don't have to over collateralize when you're burning the Zor, uh, because the, the economic rationale is that uh, by burning the Zor, reducing the supply, you're actually kind of um, you're helping uh, you know you're helping uh, stabilize this, this market for Zor uh, just because you're reducing the uh, the token supply that's circulating, mm-hmm. and so the the benefits to that are are going to be um, to the you know the economic system are going to be better uh, than uh, any kind of um, costs associated with the, uh, you know, effects rates changing or potentially having to mint more Zor later, uh, because on the aggregate, uh, you're actually taking more Zor out of circulation because XST USD and other XST assets in the future have some utility uh, that can be used. Um, so, for example, in, in DeFi apps, typically it's hard to reason about volatile um, currencies. Um, so they'll uh, usually want to include some kind of stable coin. And if you use a centralized stable coin like USDC or USDT, uh, you know, they can get frozen at any time. Um, DAI is pretty good too, but um, because of the over collateralization, the cost to mint is kind of high. And so uh, with XST USD, we just kind of remove, you know, all these extra costs and make it really easy uh, as it's also integrated right into PokeSwap. So you don't even have to think about it if you're trading it. Yeah, that's incredible. And once again, thank you for that lesson. I think a lot of people need to understand the difference between some of those major stable coins like USDT and between the Luna stable coin and between XST, because it is quite a difference um, in the way that it's governed and the way that the supply works and the way that it stores value. Um, so thank you for that. And you talked a lot there about governance and there's so much to talk about because you're working on so many amazing things. Um, but for PokeSwap, I really am excited to see PokeSwap grow out into fruition and the whole Polkadot ecosystem to be able to swap easily and, and, and grow it out as these parachain slots keep getting filled. Um, with the governance for that, I, I see it's like very decentralized, a community governed uh, DEX, which I think is a great, which is great. And I'm curious more about that governance and, and like how the community actually manages the gover- the governance of it. Yeah, so um, it's still a young ecosystem. So there's the current state and then there's the future state. So the current state is we use uh, decentralized governance that actually comes with a substrate. So it's the built-in kind of substrate governance palette. And uh, this works the same as in, uh, for example, Kusama or Polkadot, where they have a council. They also have um, the ability for token holders to vote on different proposals and to make proposals. And there's a tech committee. There's all these different pieces. And it, it works pretty well. There's like a quadratic voting type of idea where you can uh, lock up tokens for longer if you have more conviction and you can get more voting power associated with it. So it's, it's, quite, it's quite good as a single stage governance. Uh, but in the future, what we want to do is make a, um, a multi-stage governance pipeline, meaning that um, there'll be many different uh, stages in the governance process, and each stage will be done by different people. So you don't have the uh, potential to create something like a clique or you know political party or something like that. Um, and we use a lot of the ideas from American uh, political uh, scientist named uh, Tariel Bricious, and actually he spoke last year at the SOAR Economic Forum, which is a uh, online event that we are trying to host annually. And um, in his, I, in his uh, political structure, it's actually based on ancient Athenian democracy. And in ancient Athens, it wasn't a direct democracy per se. 
It was based on sortition. So sortition is uh, random, basically just randomly choosing people. Mm -hmm. And um, by having multiple stages, so you have a proposal stage, you have a review stage, you have like a, a you know, pros and cons, uh, drafting stage, then you have a voting stage. And by splitting up the governance process into all these different stages and each stage randomly choosing the participants, uh, we hope to get a more fair and a more balanced uh, democracy because in ancient Athens, um, you know, they never considered that we would have a uh, democracy like, like we have in our uh, political structures in, in, in countries today, right? Where you, it's really just a, um, you know, popularity contest. You don't, uh, you just have these, these factions that are controlling everything that, that goes against everything that um, Athenian democracy had uh, as its core tenets. Um, so, uh, so that's kind of the, the, the idea of what we're trying to do into the future. And, um, uh, so actually Athenian democracy, just to quickly say is based on three core tenets. So isagoria, isonomia, and sortition. So, um, what that means is that everyone, uh, who's a citizen has equal, uh, opportunity to contribute their voice and they all have equal, um, equal voting power. And then sortition is what I just said, the randomly choosing people. And you mix these three components together and you can get a fair and reproducible um, governance system. So that's what we want to do in the future. Very cool, Makoto. I'm looking forward to, to seeing that and <laughs> to participating uh, in that ecosystem as well. <clears throat> we don't have a lot of time left, but for the viewers that are looking to learn more about Sora and more about the stable coin and PokeSwap and, and the substrate ecosystem, What's the best way for them to reach out and to get into the community and to get involved? So they can go to sword.org. And uh, also we have a Telegram chat. Um, you can go to sword.org slash chat, and that will take you to the Telegram chat. Uh, we're pretty active in Telegram. Uh, I'm there myself posting memes uh, every day and uh, answering questions. And, um, <laughs> and it's, it's a lot of fun, actually. So um, yeah, I hope people can get involved. And you know, Sora is a community-based project. So you can actually come and you can do things and make a difference in the world. So let's work together and help, uh, help improve the world economy. Amazing, I agree. I'll leave those links in the description box below for the viewers. Thank you so much, Makoto, for coming on to talk about the Sora ecosystem. It's very fascinating. I learned a lot today. I appreciate you taking the time to come on. I'm looking forward to catching up in the future. Yeah, thanks for having me on.